everybody. Welcome. This is Joe and Peter. This is the Joe and Peter show. No, but uh, <laughs> this is Real Estate Investing Mastery, and we're doing a series called Brilliant at the Basics. And bottom line, guys, you can never go broke making money. Well, who did I hear that from, Peter? Thank you. Thank you. I thank got you. that from Peter, that little nugget of wisdom. You can never go broke making money. That's a tweetable right there. So everybody listening to this, go tweet that, whatever that means. So uh, we were talking last episode of the basic series on um uh, what were we talking about oh yeah keeping it simple and making offers making a lot of offers you can never go broke making money and you can never go broke making a lot of offers and he who makes the most offer wins always every time all right so first of all um if you go to peterandjoe.com peterandjoe.com there's a little video there peter and i talk about what we do why we're doing this um, we want to do more deals we want to grow and do deals all over the country and we're taking on partners. It's application only, so we don't just take anybody. We only want serious A, a players. But it doesn't matter if you have a full-time job. Um, if you've been wanting to get into the business and you're just kind of overwhelmed with all the stuff that you've got to do, we've got a simple, duplicatable, easy-to-follow system where we will set up your your systems for you, your voicemail, your your CRM, uh, your websites, your phone, phone systems and all that. And we'll actually do the marketing for you. We'll find the cash buyers for you. We'll find the sellers for you. Get the list. Do the postcards. We have the VAs that will work for you as well. So um, there's a lot. Even the VAs will do the follow-up. Um, we got a whole support team that will help you and work with you. I'm really, really proud of this. So if you want to go get more information, peterandjoe.com, peterandjoe.com. And Peter and I also wrote a book called Brilliant at the Basics um, about how we kind of run our systems and um, – how you can get more leads, more time, more money by being brilliant at the basics. All right, so Peter, today I wanted to talk about um, renegotiating deals because last episode we talked about just make an offer. If it's close, it's good enough. Just make an offer. And then you can use your due diligence, your, your 15, 30 days that you have to close, as your due diligence to then evaluate the deal, farm it out to your buyers, and see if there's any interest in it. So uh, first of all, talk about... Why, why do you renegotiate all your deals? I mean, isn't it – because I can hear someone say, listen, if you give somebody a contract, aren't you, aren't you morally obligated to give them that price? Aren't you kind of gaming the absolutely system? Absolutely not. You know, absolutely not. If you think about it, if that was the case, there would be no due diligence in any kind of contract. But due diligence is a customary thing that not only happens in our investor world – Heck, it happens if you go buy your own house, right? A personal house to live in. And if you think about it, if you do buy a personal house, guess what you're going to do? You're going to put that property under contract. You're going to put some due contingencies in there. You're going to put a due diligence period in there. And guess what you're going to do? You're going to send an inspector into that house. And if that inspector comes out and he says, you know what? That AC is going to crash on you. You know, the ceiling may cave in. And I got some other issues. You're going to go back to the seller and you're going to tell them, look, here's the situation. Either you make it right, go ahead and fix it, or give me a price adjustment. Either way, that's money that you're going to be getting back one way or another. So due diligence and renegotiations, it's done that it is done all the time across pretty much every facet of the real estate business. Now, here's why it's important for investors to understand the strategy of putting things under contract and then if you have to renegotiate on the back end. See, when you go in with this concept of I got to have that perfect deal set up, then as you heard in our previous video, you spend way too much time in a front end before you even make the offer trying to, trying to figure out that perfect deal. You know, how much work does it need? What are the comps and all this? Whereas our philosophy, again, going back to our previous videos, spend an order amount of time talking to sellers, putting offers out, and then only focus on those deals that you have offers accepted, okay? Now, following that philosophy of spend as much time with the sellers, make as many offers as possible, you simply don't have, I mean, my office, we have anywhere from 500 to 1,000 sellers calling us a day looking to sell their properties to us. We can't possibly do due diligence ahead of time. Now, we're pretty good. We know the market. We kind of know we can pay. The goal is to get it locked up. But then you literally use the due diligence period of the contract, which is very legitimate. That's why you do due diligence. You use that time as a time to get into the property, figure out what the rehab costs are, 
figure out the you know what else is going around there you're you know you're looking you're, you're putting your eyes on it either you or somebody in your team is putting their eyes out and then then what you do is then you can make an adjustment it's okay to make an adjustment to your purchase price you know if the seller for instance and, and you know here's the reality a lot of times it comes down to the sellers you know sometimes it just hey they misrepresent the properties not even on purpose you know what one person thinks is a ten thousand dollar renovation another person could realize it's a twenty thousand dollar renovation. So then, when you're putting your eyes on it, or somebody in your team is putting your eyes on it, then you can get very specific on what exactly the renovations are, exactly what that deal is based upon the you know the house to the left and the house on the right that you couldn't see when you made an offer is. Then you basically gather all your numbers, put them back into your spreadsheets, and that ultimately gives you the right number. Okay, and again, just like in any other real estate, whether you're buying a home to live in or buying a home to invest in, you then go back to the seller and you just present your case. Look, based upon what we saw, once we saw it, you know, it doesn't need 5,000, it needs 20,000 worth of work. You know, it, uh, you know, based upon the fact that the house next door has got 60 drug dealers and the house next door to the left has got 60 prostitutes in it based upon that. So anyway, so you, all you're doing is you're making a case back to the seller. Reality is all the people that get frustrated or potentially could look at that process and say, well, gosh, I don't know if I feel comfortable with it. The reality of it is it is shockingly surprising how many sellers are OK with that. They're, they're totally fine. They don't get upset. They don't like, well, what did you do this for? And if they do say it, you just explain to them how what process works. And, and I can't, you know, again, I can't remember too many times that hearing back from my office staff where sellers are like, now, it doesn't mean they're going to agree with it, but under no circumstances do sellers feel like, wow, that is just an unbelievably crazy way to do it. So what I encourage people to do is just try it. Get it locked up, put under contract, go through due diligence, line up all the numbers, develop a case, present a case back to the seller of why you potentially need a reduction in numbers. And, and, and I think most people will be pleasantly surprised how receptive sellers are when they have some logic to go behind. And, you know, it's really simple. I think, and, and Peter, you're renegotiating, I'm going to guess, 80 to 100% of your deals. Now, when, in your original contract, do you put a certain number of days for inspection contingency or are they, how do you structure yeah. your contracts? Yeah, we do. We put on a, you know, on a typical deal, we, we may work with a 15-day due diligence. You know, the bigger the deal, the more the due diligence. You know, if we're buying a, an apartment building or maybe some kind of a small commercial establishment will will go up in a due diligence or maybe the property is further away from us than kind of in our sweet spot areas. But we want to start out with 15 during negotiations period, be willing to negotiate it all the way down to as low as seven for the right kind of deal. But we really want to be somewhere between 10 and 15. And that's the time we're using to um, walk through the process. Now you have, do you have inspectors or people on your team that go and look at the property and give you a contractor's estimate for repairs. Is that what you do? That's right. That's right. We have actually FHA qualified inspectors go out there, do the due diligence on the repairs, uh, put together some really good pictures of the property, basically deliver back to us kind of the full story of what is going on with that deal and what is going on with that property. Do you pay them a certain amount per report that they do for you? Yeah. Yeah. We pay our inspectors $30 per report. Okay. 30 bucks. Yeah, it's pretty pretty good. But you know, again, we're we're a volume person, right? Yeah, okay. So our inspectors can easily make five hundred dollars a week doing inspections, and you know, for an inspector making five hundred bucks a week is not a bad income. Yeah, yeah. And again, remember on the previous episode, I told you guys if if you got pictures, if you have pictures, uh, there are simple, easy ways that you could estimate repairs using something like five dollars, ten dollars, and fifteen dollars. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go listen to the last episode. Um, and the other thing you could do is if, if you don't have a strong estimate of repairs, sometimes uh, what I've done in the past is just est estimate the repairs up to the nearest $5,000. And uh, it's pretty easy to, once you get good at this and you get going, you, you can figure repairs in increments of $5,000 and you're probably going to be pretty safe. And again, the great thing about this business is you're just wholesaling the contract, right? Mm -hmm. You're just wholesaling the contract. So there's very little risk, if any, in these types of transactions, because if you can't sell it, if you don't have um, a buyer, 
to wholesale that property to, or it's just at the end of the day, it's not going to be a good deal, then you can back out of the contract. You may lose your earnest money deposit, but you know you can always get get out of the contract, renegotiate if you have to. So mm-hmm. it's it's just it's nothing wrong with renegotiating going back to the sellers, right? Mm-hmm. Cool. Absolutely. Um, one more question I had, Peter, on this is like, what, what, could you give us an example of a, of the conversation you have with the seller? When you call them back, the first call back, you know, they're expecting to get 25000 for their house um, and because that's what the initial contract was for. And you call them back to renegotiate. What is How does a typical conversation go? We just tell them it's, it's just it's, it's a numbers driven business for us. We do a number of different inspections. We do a renovation, what we've been talking about. We also do a rental based upon what it could be re-rented and a resale inspection. We plug all those numbers into a spreadsheet and the end it kicks out a number and that's what we go with. Simple as that. So we do a rehab, resale, rental inspection, put it in the spreadsheet, kicks out a number, and Mr. Seller, this is what the number is, and we still want to do the deal, but this is the adjustment we have to make to go forward. Simple enough. Simple enough. Yep. You can you can't go broke by making offers. <laughs> right? That's a good go, That's your now that's yours right there. <laughs> I'll take that. You can't go one. broke by making offers. Um well, good. This has been really helpful, Peter. I appreciate it. Go to peterandjoe.com, guys, if you want to see what Peter does, if you want to work with us, and if you want that spreadsheet Peter's talking about, if you want to go to Peter's office and hang out with him and, and see how he runs his operation, if you want to hang out with me in, in, in St. Louis and see my operation, or you want to see my, my RV, I can show you my RV. But Peter's got more exciting things going on in Atlanta. We'd love to work with you. We'd love to talk with you. And the, it's a real simple application process. You go to peterandjoe.com, watch a little video. We explain what we do. And then you fill out the application. You'll get on the phone with Peter. And uh, hopefully within a week after that, you'll start getting leads, start working with you. I'm excited about this business. There's, uh, We have tons of clients making a ton of money. Um, business has never been better. I see people all over the country wholesaling a ton of deals. Um, whether the market's cold, hot, flat, or warm, whatever, this is the time now to start investing in real estate. And uh, this has been good. So, guys, go to peterandjoe.com. You get more information about what Peter and I are doing. And uh, thanks, Peter. Until the next thanks, video, Joe. we'll see you guys. Bye-bye. Bye.